Let's take a look at the healthcare landscape of Canada today. In the urban centers of Canada, healthcare accessibility has improved a lot. In large cities and towns, there are a lot of options for going to hospitals and um, clinics, right? Um, within manageable distance and time. On the other hand, in rural and remote areas of Canada, such as Northern Ontario, accessing healthcare is still quite a challenge. The introduction of telemedicine in those rural and remote communities has allowed the inhabitants of those communities to significantly reduce healthcare associated costs as well as travel time significantly since 2011. In addition to telemedicine, mobile health, electronic health record, virtual care technologies, they have also made a lot of progress. The question that we want to ask ourselves is, what is next? What if the common thing that these technologies that I just mentioned are missing? One of the things that they lack is integration of intelligence. You guessed it right, AI, artificial intelligence. Can they make uh, intelligent decisions on their own? We got lots of things around us that we call a smart. A smartness is the buzzword, right? Who doesn't own a smartphone here in the room? Raise your hand. Not a single one. We want to wear smartwatches, dream of driving smart cars, right? Want to live at smart homes. Is our healthcare smart? Or is this just a buzzword, right? So how can we really make our healthcare is smart. So that's what I will be talking about. So what's next? How can we um, make this combination, this fusion of artificial intelligence and Internet of Things or IoT connectivity so that we can bring IoT-based home monitoring and medical analytics closer to the rural and remote members of the community so that they do not have to frequently travel away from the comfort of their home communities to go to larger cities to procure healthcare service. What is the Internet of Things, IoT? Everybody has heard about this, everybody is talking about it. IoT is a collection of sensors, wearables, like Fitbit devices. Um, what else? Programmable devices, off-the-shelf machines, uh, your mobile phones, other gadgets, as well as the cloud. So simply put, IoT is a collection of many, many machines, right? On the other hand, artificial intelligence or AI gives the ability to these machines around us to learn from previous experience add just to new inputs and perform human-like tasks. Okay. The examples of AI applications that you have often heard about today range from chess playing computers to very complex board game playing computers that defeated the uh, grandmasters of the ancient Chinese game Go. And that program kept learning playing Go by itself. That is fascinating. Now machines can play games with itself. Other examples, driverless cars, autonomous vehicles, right? That's another fascinating example. All these applications heavily rely on machine learning and deep learning <coughs> techniques. Using these techniques, a computer, a machine, is programmed to process a large set of data and recognize patterns within that data. The term AI is not new. It was coined way back in, what, 1956? Artificial neural networks were constructed to mimic biological neurons in our brain to solve various computational problems, right? But their full potential was not realized until very recently. Because now we have 
at our disposal a large number of big data sets. The computational power has also improved radically. Your small smartphone packs a lot more punch. It is a computer by its own merit. It got more computational power than the mainframe or big desktop computer that used to exist like 15, 20 years ago, right? Then there is a tremendous advancement in deep neural network architectures and algorithms. Due to these improvements, the application of AI is not exclusive to just one domain, but it has penetrated various domains of our everyday life, ranging from computer vision, which facilitates driverless cars, to natural language processing and speech recognition, which power uh, what? Virtual and um, voice assistants like Siri, um, Google Assistant, robotics, which can facilitate telesurgery, remote surgery, right? Uh, you have other examples such as smart networks like IoT, next generation, 5G plus networks, and of course, smart health. Let's talk about a low tier AI example, something that all of us know and have used from one time to another, virtual and voice assistants. So all our uh, smartphones and other gadgets, they're equipped with these assistants, these personal assistants, some examples, Siri, uh, Google Assistant, Google Home, Alexa, Cortana. What do you use them for ordinarily? Ordinarily, they're used for, let me see, uh, setting the alarm, checking the weather condition. Hey, Siri, how is the weather like today in front of it? Oh, gosh, it is not snowing today. That's good, <laughs> right? Uh, what else can it do? Can it help doctors and patients? Is there any such application? For example, doctors typically use computer programs to take patient memos, clinical notes, process a lot of data, and access electronic health records. These virtual and voice assistants can help the doctors to accomplish those tasks and save valuable time which the doctors can actually use to attend the patients, to provide or offer patient-centric service. How can it be useful? How can these uh, virtual assistants, voice assistants be useful for patients, especially in rural and uh, remote settings? They can be useful for senior citizens aging at home on their own in rural areas. These voice assistants can remind them when to take prescribed medi medicine, right, medication. They can also be useful for patients who are suffering from chronic diseases, experiencing flare-ups. They can assist disabled patients who need to interact with their family caregivers as well as relatives. So have we considered those potentials of such low tier AI except. Now, talking about slightly more advanced AI rather than those chatbots, um, let's talk about artificial intelligence of things or AIoT, which simply combines IoT and AI. The conventional IoT sensors, they do not have the capability for intelligence thinking or processing. Okay? So basically what an IoT sensor would do, it would collect data, let's say health data of a patient, right? And then it has to outsource it to a remote cloud, right? It doesn't have that localized, that self-processing ability. So it's like a kid who doesn't want to do his own work. Want to give it to somebody else and tell him like, hey, do it for me, right? On the other hand, what we came up with this new idea, new direction is the logic in sensor using a spintronic sensing technology. What is a spintronic? Simply put, this is the same sensing technology that is used for making your SSD hard drives on your laptops. But we have come up with this new technology where we can use a spintronic sensor and fuse the sensing part and the pre-trained AI logic part together so that they don't have to go to a remote cloud doing all these jobs. So it becomes a smart, okay? 
All right. They can be pretty useful for home monitoring, looking at um, heart and brain conditions, these are spin training sensors, right? Uh, the conventional way of monitoring heart signals or heart conditions is electrocardiogram or ECG. What is ECG? We have all known about it. ECG is the language of the heart. It is the alphabet of the heart. Any medical professional, a doctor or nurse practitioner should be able to look at an ECG strip that's in blue or there. Look at it and be able to interpret it. Tell whether the heart is functioning normally or whether there is drop beat, arrhythmia, ischemia, etc. Right? Okay, if you want to use these standard ECG machines or even portable Holter monitors at rural homes for prolonged monitoring, right? If you want to use them for days to weeks to months, they're not that easy, difficult, because of technical deployment challenges. Uh, management issues as well as financial implications. What can be the alternative? An alternative could be magnetocardiography, MCG. A standard MCG machines are like this big and they usually require what shielded rooms. But the spintronic sensor based AIoT sensor which combines logic and sensing power, it's quite small as shown in this little graphic here and it is inv non-invasive, right? You don't have to strap it on the patient body, and it can be used for prolonged sensing. It's still in the pilot stage, but that's the potential of this thing. All right, so one thing is that kind of MCG is not human interpretable. I said that ECG is the language of the heart, is it interpretable by doctors, by physicians, but MCG uh, is often like noisy, and you can't really interpret it on its own. So we could actually take this MCG sensed by our spintronic sensor and denoise it sensor to perform some kind of intelligent processing locally. Okay, think globally, act locally, right? So what it's doing here, um, the intelligence is being performed at this edge device, whether at your AI sensor or the smartphone of the patient. Okay, so the patient data does not need to travel over networks and go to a remote cloud, a centralized server process. So what can you achieve? You can achieve reduced analytics time. Uh, you can achieve privacy preservation. Very, very important for healthcare data, right? So if you want to like uh, say that, hey, I'm going to collect your health data, the first concern the remote and rural community members may have in their mind is, what are we going to do with my data, right? So this is one uh, positive point of edge intelligence. This is the edge intelligence because this intelli intelligence is local at the AIOD sensor and at one corner or edge of this connected health system, right? Okay. However, if we want to uh, train these local AI models, if we want to rather enhance or update these local AI models, how can we do, the, do, do this? Then we have to um, utilize all the patient sensors data and use them to uh, train a global AI model. Is it possible without sharing the actual data with the remote cloud, with a central cloud. This is possible with this new concept called federated learning. Each patient device or age device makes its own local AI model and periodically sends it to a central server. Then that central server combines all these local AI models, makes a global AI model, okay? When a patient device or an edge device acquires new data over time, all it has to do is download that updated global AI model, right? Use it to make prediction more accurately and efficiently without explicitly sending the patient data to the cloud, right? So basically what these patient devices are doing is sharing the wisdom or understanding 
rather than the raw healthcare data, thereby keeping privacy. At the same time, if somebody wants to hack onto the, the uh, global AI model at the central server, if you want to reverse engineer it, it is also not possible. So it doesn't give out any patient data information. It doesn't leak out any such thing. So what does the future hold for us as far as these AI applications are concerned? Are they going to have more privacy and security issues? What do you think? Looking at these photographs, what do you think? In, the, in fact, these individuals, they don't exist. They are generated by a state-of-the-art AI technique called Generative Adversarial Network, or GAN. Okay? So, these GAN-generated deepfake photos, videos, and even audio clips are becoming a social problem. Right? But they do have some positive applications as well, especially in the healthcare context. For example, if you have a very data-limited scenario, for example, if there is a scarcity of rare brain tumor images, okay, you can use a GAN to generate realistic-looking synthetic MRIs of these rare tumors that can really improve the radiology analytics. Claude Shannon, father of information science, implied that if AI were to ever come to pass, humans would be subservient to the machines. Indeed, AI is a double-edged sword. So we need to embrace AI in a very responsible way for the betterment of our society. Right? So that we can reduce not only the healthcare gaps, but other social gaps. <laughs> By this way, we can root for the humans, not for the machines. Thank you very much.